A former beauty queen accused of plotting the murder of her husband with a lover in the Bahamas is leveling accusations of her own against her latest boyfriend. We're breaking down what we're able to find out about him and the allegations, as well as the latest on her murder for hire case, all with trial attorney Bob Hilla. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Now we've told you before about Lindsay Shiver. She's the mom of three boys accused of plotting with her boyfriend in the Bahamas to have her estranged NFL player husband killed. Now, it might not surprise you to learn that Shiver and her husband, Robert, they were going through quite a contentious divorce with allegations of domestic violence and withholding their children from each other. We have filed for divorce. Okay. Living in the same house, it's hell on earth, as you can imagine. Okay. Some complicated legal issues in this story, right? And I tell you what, when it comes to sorting out the law, specifically in personal injury cases, got to call out Morgan & Morgan. They're the largest injury law firm in America and our proud sponsor here on Sidebar. And with over a thousand attorneys, Morgan & Morgan has been securing multi-million dollar verdicts and settlements across this country for years. They have been sorting out the law from starting your claim to talking to your legal team to uploading documents. The whole process can be done straight from your smartphone. So if you're injured, you can easily start a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC Sidebar. So as you saw, police were called out to the couple's multi-million dollar home several times for complaints. And in July of 2023, police in Thomasville, Georgia, that's near the Florida line, they responded to the home because Robert and the boys were headed to the Bahamas on a private plane. And it seems Lindsay wanted to go too. So for the last three weeks, maybe longer, she's had her couple's trip planned with her boyfriend to go to Key West. Okay, but she just said you're going. I, that was the key west. I'm taking my kids, my three boys, to the Bahamas this morning. Our kids. Our kids. Yesterday, she sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas. But I own two, and by the way. And when we land, she's going to go to her boyfriend. Elsewhere. And me and the kids are going to our house. And I told her I'm not supporting that and you're not getting on the airplane, that can mess with the kids' heads, and it's just something we're not gonna do. In situations like this, the best thing that we always recommend is y'all separate. Don't, just separate from each other. You don't need to be going on vacation together if you file for divorce, and it's obviously a volatile situation. That's right. Okay, and according to Bahamian authorities, on this same day, Lindsay and her Bahamian boyfriend plotted the murder for hire plot against her husband. So Terrence Bethel was a bartender in the Bahamas. Authorities named him as an alleged co-conspirator. They reportedly recruited this man, Farron Newbold Jr., to carry out the hit. He has also been charged by Bahamian police alongside Bethel and Shiver. And police there say they uncovered the plot when they suspected the bartender of committing an unrelated crime and they went through his phone. So cops examined Shiver's iPhone and they discovered that she had allegedly sent Newbold Jr. quote, several pictures of her husband, Robert Shiver, along with a text saying, kill him. This is according to court documents. There's also an alleged confession from Shiver to the police in the Bahamas that she apparently told Bethel she wanted to kill Robert and Bethel said he wanted to kill him too. But she also said that she was just venting. She was just angry. She never actually wanted to do him any harm. That's probably going to be a defense that she puts forward. She was arrested and jailed in Nassau in July of 2023. She got out on $100,000 bail. She has to wear an ankle monitor. She wasn't allowed to leave the island. But last December, the judge in the Bahamas agreed that Shiver could return to the U.S. to see her children and live with her parents in Alabama. She still has to wear the ankle monitor, and she can't travel to Georgia where Robert and the boys live. Now, at the time of her release, her attorney, Owen Wells, said, quote, she continues to face the legal process with complete transparency and honesty. Lindsay is looking forward to getting this ordeal behind her. And most importantly, she is looking forward to being reunited with her young children who have been without their mother for many months. Now, since her return, the former Miss County 2005, yes, former beauty queen, is apparently dating again. And this is where a whole slew of new problems come along. Why? Because according to new court documents from Alabama, Things aren't going so well, and that's what we want to talk about right now, because Shiver filed a protection order 
against 35-year-old Dorsey Robert Love in Houston County on July 29th. She claims Love threw her onto a bed, tried to choke her, suffocate her with a pillow at a home in Dothan, Alabama. She also claims that he abused her on an earlier trip to Florida, but says she didn't report that to police. And she wrote in the protection order request, quote, he threatened to kill me. Love was arrested on July 31st. He was charged with strangulation. Now, we have found multiple mug shots out there for Mr. Love, but we haven't been able to independently verify the exact charges that he's faced or any convictions. As for Shiver, her trial uh, in the Bahamas is expected to begin in October of this year. Made of questions right here. I want to bring in, first time here on Sidebar, trial attorney Bob Hilla. Bob, good to see you. So, we, so for anybody who doesn't know, Bob and I have appeared together on the Long Crime Network for years. I was on, I think, like last week, the week before, I said, how come you haven't been on Sidebar? And that is when you told me, I don't like you, Jesse. I don't want to be on. And, and, but I, despite your wishes, you're, you're on now. Well, thank you for having me here today. It's great to be back with you. Good to see you. So how does this development fit into the overall story? And most importantly, how does this fit into the Bahamas case in any which way? I don't know that it really does. Uh, I mean, it's a separate incident. And it shows that her choice in men may be somewhat um, questionable. Um, but the issue really is on this love person and what his actions were. Um, he doesn't seem to be related in any way to any plot in the Bahamas to kill her husband. So with respect to whether or not anything in that case leads into the other one in the Bahamas, I just don't think it does, unless he starts to say, she told me some things. And then he could be called as a witness in the Bahamas. Right. right. Because I don't know, if you take these allegations as true, what led to this, this physical altercation between the couple. Um, I will tell you, take, look, she, he's innocent until proven guilty. Right. These are accusations. I have to say there is a little bit of overlap here because we remember in that body cam video that we played, she had accused Robert of getting physical with her. And she says in the video, that doesn't mean you get aggressive and push me out of the way. And he goes, Lindsay, I did not push you or anything. So assuming he's telling the truth, there's a lot of, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but could it also be if she wasn't telling the truth about Robert, could she not be telling the truth about this individual? Well, credibility is always an issue in any case. And usually the adverse side is always looking to probe that, you know, sometimes for a, a proof basis to establish an element of an offense. In this case, it might be used to attack her if she says something that the government in the Bahamas doesn't like and says, oh, we have other instances where she has not been accurate. But again, there's a question, was she inaccurate? You know, who really told the truth there? So the credibility issue would have to be where there's an inconsistency in what somebody said, not just where somebody's challenged what they said as true. And that case, this new case, is not going to get resolved before the Bahamas case, assuming it goes to trial uh, before. So the question I have is if she were to testify, uh, let's say for, the reason I asked that is because I was thinking, let's say he's found not guilty. Let's say it turns out this was, she made it up. If she, if she were to take the stand in the Bahamas, and I'm not an expert on Bahamian law, but I wonder if she could be questioned about this incident. Obviously, it'd be up to the judge to decide whether it's relevant in the case. I mean, Bahamian law, as I understand it, and I don't, I'm not an expert on it either, but um, is not too different from the United States in certain respects. In other words, there'll be a jury trial here. Um, the government has to prove that there is a conspiracy, that it's a credible plot, and not just you know something that hatched because of an angry spouse. Um, and there are some problems with the case unless there's more evidence that hasn't been revealed yet. And, and that may be the case in the Bahamas. But in terms of something that she would say in the case with love, um, you know, again, they have an alleged confession from her. They have a WhatsApp statement uh, to someone else. I don't know that anything that she would say to love about abuse or fake accusations about abuse would apply in, in, in the case there. Because he doesn't accuse her, love doesn't accuse her right. of abusing her. Right. It would be different if it showed a violent tendency, perhaps. Um, but again, it's a stretch. It's, I just, I, it's just an interesting development when it comes to this. And I think about the case that she's currently facing. Do you think it's relevant at all that she's dating while she's 
I mean, essentially in, accused in a murder for hire plot. Does that strike you as strange at all? Well, she's not going to look like Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm here. I mean, you know, this is a woman, um, and it's an interesting relationship because here she was going to go to Key West with her boyfriend, but then decides to join her husband and three children on a private plane. But then when she gets to the Bahamas, she's going to stay with the same boyfriend somewhere else in the Bahamas, but just wanted to get on. So one of the questions is going to be, did she create that scenario uh, and getting the cops there? Um, and was that some sort of a, a, a setup to say that she was a victim of abuse? And that's why she responded in the way she did. Um, but again, uh, it, 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 it's a stretch on that. They're going to look at what happened in the Bahamas. The problem with that, the case there with Shiver is you don't have any history of her having any communications on a plot before that same day of the argument in the driveway and the alleged plot discussion down in the Bahamas. That was all the same day. So you don't have issues on that. There is a monetary issue here because... Well, well before you go to the monetary, what do you mean by the same day? In the sense, why is that a problem? Well, I think that plots, conspiracies, first of all, you have to have an agreement to commit a crime. Correct. So it seems like they have that element here. Uh, and then there has to be some action, though, in furtherance of that conspiracy. It doesn't have to be that they attempted to kill the person, but they have to go get a weapon. They have to go, you know, there has to be something to show you're actually going to intend to carry out this crime. That, to me, seems like there's some evidence that's lacking here um, in the Bahamas on that, unless, as I said before, they have something that they're not sharing yet. I, um, that could be very well true, but if you send a picture to somebody, allegedly send a picture and say, kill them, right. is that enough? I don't think it is. Um, I'm not sure how the Bahamas would treat that. What is if there's an exchange of money? Well, that's another thing. I mean, there is an issue here. Now, there was a divorce, so they already knew about the divorce, um, but there was a lot of money involved here. Now, if he does die, as I understand Georgia law, then um, the divorce disappears because there's, it evaporates because the spouse is no longer living. Now it gets kicked over to inheritance law. So if he doesn't have a will that cuts her out, then whatever he would be entitled to um, would then perhaps go to her. These people had a lot of money. Yeah. So there, there could be a monetary motivation here, and it may be a monetary motivation or the boyfriend to even be involved if he was standing to gain. But again, I didn't see anything where there was a discussion about exchange of money. Even Newbold, there's nothing that I saw that said he was going to get anything for this murder. Right. And usually, you know, there's at least something about, hey, I'll pay you 10000 or I'll pay you 15000 for this, or the money will be here. There's some sort of description here. All you have is an angry spouse with a boyfriend in proximity to her husband down in the islands, and she's saying, kill him, and then she sends photographs and directs him. But then what happens after that apparently is nothing. By the way, let me ask you a question. If, she, if the charges were dropped or she's found not guilty, does that affect her ability to reunite with her children? She, would there be any legal mechanism by which, her, uh, by which Robert could ultimately say, in light of everything, she shouldn't be around the kids, but she's innocent. So what, what mechanism, what legal mechanisms could he use to prevent her uh, from being near the children? Because I, I don't know if there could be. Well, and I'm an not accu sure. Accusation charges in of themselves is probably not. And, and that's a great point. I'm not sure there are either. Yeah. Um, but it depends. If you go to a trial and there are proofs that are in and there's evidence and there's a record and a transcription of that record or, or other documents and things, and that establishes a basis for him to say she's a danger to the children. Because right. the focus would always be on the children, as right. I understand it, with family court. So, you know, un unless there's something to show that she's a threat to him or can create a toxic environment for those children because of her relationship yeah. with him, then... Um, that, that, that's you know, fair, because that you don't always have to be, char you don't always have to be found guilty of a crime right. to, to lose access to your children, right? right? There could be other things that, and the standard could be lower there. Um, just generally speaking, before I let you go on this, have you seen murder for hire cases where the art defense is, I just, I was angry. I wasn't serious. Is that the best defense and the most successful defense? I'll answer that in two parts. The first, I haven't seen anything where there's not a greater development um, than there was here. Sure. I mean, there's usually 
a period of time where things are leading up to the critical discussion, and then there's some activity after that to start getting in place to commit the crime. Yeah. Now, is it enough? It depends on what happens what, if there's a proof of an agreement, as there seems to be here, and then they go ahead and they do something on that um, to further advance that plan, that plot. Then it becomes a credible plot. But the, the question is going to be, what is that significant issue? If they go out and buy a weapon, I'd argue with you, yes. Yeah. And, 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 and sadly, a lot of the murder-for-hire plots I actually cover end up with someone dead. Um, and then it becomes a question, I wasn't involved, I wasn't serious, they took it into their own hands. Um, but if you take these allegations as true, and that she really did want this to happen to her husband or estranged husband, it is a miracle, and I think we should all be thankful that this father was not killed and that these children were not left without a father because this could have ended much worse. But again, she is innocent until proven guilty, at least in our United States. And, um, you know, these are accusations. We'll see if the, how it ultimately gets prosecuted and when. But just an interesting development, nonetheless, about another aspect of her life coming into this. Well, and, and it, it, it doesn't help her in her perspective to a jury. But then again, that's going to be the argument. Does this have any linkage to this case? And is it too unduly prejudicial? Well, the jury, everything's prejudicial in a trial for one side or the other. Yeah. It's a question whether it's unfairly prejudicial. It made the news. And so if you're talking about jury selection here in the United States, what do you know about Lindsay Shiver? Have you said, oh, I saw that she, something happened with this restraining order. You know, it's, it's it made the news. And that's not something I think she wants or uh, yeah. anybody who represents her wants is her making news in the middle of this. But Bob Hilla, good seeing you. Thank good you so much, you. sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. That's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.